What is up guys, it's Rick and we're doing another video today on the Tacoma. Today we embark on the first mission in blacking out all the chrome on the Tacoma. This is going to be multiple parts because I don't have everything in and also I don't think I could complete everything that I want to do in terms of blacking it out in one day. But let me walk you around the Tacoma, which is behind me, partially in and out of my garage, which is also new. I got a garage now to work out of. It's pretty sweet. But uh, I'll walk you through what all I'm doing to black out the Tacoma. So starting at the back here, obviously we need to get rid of these chrome bumper plates. Those are going to be plastic dip, which is something we will be accomplishing today. This chrome V6 badge, I think it looks weird because it's not symmetrical. There's nothing else on the other side. So we're going to be removing that. I'm going to be showing you guys how to remove badges. And then our taillights. Our taillights are not terrible. They're actually pretty good at being dark and kind of blending in. But we're going to be tinting those with a smoked tint kit, which is part of the stuff that is not here yet. The smoking, uh, when I say I'm going to be tinting, smoking stuff, that stuff will be coming at a later date. Rims, I'm kind of just going to leave the rims like they are for now. I'm not entirely sure if I really want to mess with them. I'm going to black everything else out and see what they look like as they are. Maybe we'll plastic dip them down the line. Who knows? Coming around the side here, we have these chrome side markers, which are turn signals. Those are going to be smoke tinted out. And then we have the Tacoma badges. Those are going to be plasti dipped today. And then lastly on the front here we got the fog lights, headlights. Those are going to be tinted out black as well. Emblem also going to try and tint. And then this chrome, this chrome piece around here that can actually pop off. So we're going to be taking the, the front end apart today and we're going to be popping that out and plasti dipping it as well. So basically in a nutshell we're going to be doing plasti dipping today as well as removing the one emblem. So quickly let's go through the tools I'm going to be using today. First off we have my Craftsman socket set that should have everything I need to do to take apart the bumper. Um, four cans of plasti dip, probably not going to need all that. Some sort of masking, this is just uh, trash bags that I've cut to make big sheets of masking. Alcohol to wipe down all of the surfaces we're going to be plastic dipping. Toothpicks to help remove plastic dip around the emblems. Masking tape, obviously to mask off the emblems. Fishing line for removing the V6 badge on the back. Uh, music source, very important. And another bag full of tools, mostly going to need the screwdrivers in here to pop off some of the clips. And lastly, it's not here because I left it upstairs but a heat gun. You're going to need a heat gun to take the emblem off. That's not necessary. You can just get away with just using the fishing line, but it's going to help get it off easier. First thing I'm going to embark on is getting these bumper caps off. So first thing with the bumper cap, there are three clips here to take off. You need to take off all three of those clips. Next thing we're going to be is a uh, prying up very violent or uh, with a decent amount of force to pull off the plastic bumper top. The reason why we had to take off that bumper is to get to this clip and this clip. You might be able to stick a screwdriver in there and uh, pull that tab up, but I actually had to get down behind the bumper and use a screwdriver to push that tab up and out. I did miss one clip, it's right there tucked behind this bumper. That might be a little tricky to get to, but it shouldn't be that hard. Actually, I'm corrected, there was one there and one there. So there was two, and all I really did was just used a screwdriver, and there's enough room that you can get behind it and pry it out. So lastly here, there should only be one clip right here that you have to remove, and the only way to really do that is to just pry on the bumper. There's no way to actually get behind it to remove that clip. That's it. So like I said, there was those two push clips on the side, there was three on the bottom, and then there was this last one that we ripped out right here, which is this right here, which is just tucked behind here, and it's pushed into that. I'm not sure how to get that back in, maybe super glue. Now I'm gonna go ahead and remove the other side, and then we will get to removing the front grill plate, and then we can get the plastic dipping. And it's hot. Okay, that is two bumper caps now removed. Sorry, I didn't film anything for over there. You can't tell, I'm sweating like a like crap. I haven't got a fan running, but it's it's a little over 94 degrees out here in North Carolina. But let's move around to the front 
and let's get let's get the bumper removed it's time to remove the front grill and it's actually really simple to move this whole entire piece comes off the whole entire grill with the face and everything so there are two 10 millimeter bolts right here and right here and then you have on the top you have two plastic clips one right here and one right here and then down below there are four plastic clips that are kind of hard to see but there's they're underneath this thing so there's one right here there's another one right here if you can see and there's one over here and one over there so there's four at the bottom to remove those basically we're gonna need some straight screwdrivers and a 10 millimeter socket pretty straightforward So one thing I did forget to mention, if you do have a 2018 model, there is this clip right here. And there's also a little uh, holder that holds the clip onto there that you need to remove as well. That's for the front radar sensor that is behind the emblem. So on the back of the grill to take off that chrome outer piece, there are six clips. Or there's six clips along the top that are chrome. You got to take those off. There's two along the bottom. And then there is a series of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Phillips screws that you need to remove as well. So that actually kind of gives you a taste of what it's going to look like when it has a black because it's you can't see any more black anymore. But this is going to, or you can't see any more chrome no more. We have the chrome front grill rim. And then we have the two chrome bumpers. Those now need to be set up on a painting station. Then wipe them down with alcohol to get painted with plastic dip. And then we also need to mask off the emblems, clean them up and get them ready for painting as well. I'm gonna get all that set up and organized and then we will get the plastic dipping. Okay, so they are roughly masked out, and when I say roughly, it's plastic, so you don't have to worry about being really careful on masking. Plus, I have a pretty nice coat of wax on here. If any plastic dip does get on it, it'll just wipe right off. And actually, that's also the wax is making it hard for the painter's tape to stick, which is why now we're gonna be taking alcohol, rubbing alcohol, and cleaning off the emblems. That way, any wax that was on them, see right here, the tape's coming up on me. Any uh, any wax that's on them will come off. That way, the plastic dip will have something nice to adhere to. Prep is complete and let me just say one tip for you guys don't overlook or skip out on prep prep is the most important thing ever um, even with wiping these down with alcohol I was still touching them while I did so I went over them one more time while they were laying on the cardboard getting ready to be sprayed to make sure none of my finger residue was left over on the paint so now it's time to spray Plasti Dip so I don't really have to worry about this right now because it's stupid hot out but one tip for a smoother finish with your Plasti Dip is to heat up your bottle. So if it's uh, colder, like down in the 40s or 50s while you're trying to spray Plasti Dip, uh, put your bottles of Plasti, Plasti Dip in some hot water, heat them up a little bit, to get them to that 70, 80, 90 degree temperature mark. That way the paint flows smoother and it'll lay down a smoother finish. Now if you guys are unfamiliar with Plasti Dip, it is a removable rubber coating for um, anything really and it's very popular in the automotive industry the Plasti Dip stuff but you apply multiple multiple coats so the first coat you guys are going to see me spray is not even going to really cover at all um, but we're going to build up probably anywhere from six to eight coats I'm probably shooting for eight coats that way we have a nice thick finish and the point behind putting a lot of coats like you'll see three coats will look pretty good 
but the more coats you put on, the easier it is to peel off at a later date, which is a huge thing. So now I'm gonna put on some rubber gloves so that way I don't get paint on my hands. And we're gonna begin the process of spray painting um, all these parts. And in between that, we're probably gonna work on getting that V6 badge off the back of the truck. All right, so that's coat one. We gotta wait 30 minutes in between coats. I'm probably gonna go a little quicker in that because it is hot as crap out here. And so I'm probably gonna wait maybe about 20 minutes and then we're gonna do the next coat. But in the meantime, between this first coat and second coat, we're gonna get working on this badge because it's pretty quick to get a badge off. So uh, first thing you're gonna need is your heat gun. I got right here, just a simple Wagner heat gun. You don't necessarily need one, and you're also gonna need some fishing line. So uh, let's get over to the emblem and then I'll show you how to do it. So first things first, you're gonna take your fishing line, get yourself a decent amount of fishing line, cut that off. And uh, I'm just using 10 pound cheap ass test line that you can buy at Walmart for like a dollar. Then you're gonna make some wraps around each one of your hands when you go to do this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go behind the label and we're gonna saw back and forth. And honestly, you don't really need heat to get this going. Um, it just makes it a hell of a lot easier if you heat this up prior to doing the fishing line. So now I'm gonna grab my heat gun and I'm gonna heat this up. You wanna be careful not to put too much heat on it because you could crack your, uh, your paint. Um, so just be very careful and mindful of that. So all I'm doing is just applying heat and heating it up. Um, I'll probably feel it occasionally to make sure I'm not getting it too, too hot. If it's too hot to touch, you're heating it up way too much. And like I said, it doesn't take much heat to get it going. So now I'm gonna go back and wrap my hands around this again, and I'm gonna stick it behind the badge, and I'm just going to saw back and forth, like so. As you can, up. Oh. And uh, judging on what fish line you get, it might break on you, like mine just did, so I'm gonna have to cut off another piece, uh, and I'll probably reheat this again, and do it again. And you really wanna just let the fishing line do the work. You don't really wanna force it, just let the fishing line do the work back and forth. Don't really be tugging on it like this direction, just up and down motion, it'll saw right through it, no problem. And right there we are sawed through it. As you can see, the badge is still on here, but you should be able to just pull it off. And it is a little bit hot because of the heat. So in this case, the badge came off with no residue on it, and all the residue is on the truck itself. So as you can see here, we got the residue left over, and you can really just peel this back with your finger, especially if it's a new vehicle, the badge and the adhesive is very new um, to the clear coat and to the paint. So you can normally just peel it off with no issue. So I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna work it back with my finger. I might heat it up occasionally. Heat does help to get this off. So if I just take the heat gun real quick, heat it up a little bit. Normally it allows you to move it a lot easier. Now you gotta watch it because it will, it can burn your hands if you get it too hot. So. Be careful and mindful of that, but it just helps to get it off and heat it up a little bit, especially if it's colder out. Okay, so the majority of the adhesive is off here, just a little bit is left. So the next thing you're gonna need is some Goo Gone, which if we go back to my mass array of cleaning products for vehicles, we should be able to find Goo Gone. So this is what's going to help you remove that last little bit of adhesive. So basically all you're gonna do is spray it onto either a rag or onto the vehicle. I'll probably just spray it onto the vehicle. It's a clean area. And use paper towels, because I don't want to ruin my uh, cleaning towels to get off the last bit of adhesive. But before we get to that, it's time to do another coat of Plasti Dip. <laughs> You guys noticed on that coat I did go a little bit thicker and I stayed a little bit longer and that's because after the first coat that's your tack coat basically providing the adhesion between the plastic dip and the surface so the second coat and every coat from out here can be nice thick even coats so we have two coats on now I'm probably just going to fast forward until we get the coat six decide I'm going to do six coats on the emblems and then eight coats on the bumper caps and that just because the bumper caps are going to see a lot more debris and stuff hit them, so I want them to be a nice, thick, strong coat. Back over here, 
to the emblem, we're gonna be taking paper towels and goo gone and getting this off. Okay, so as you can see, the adhesive is completely gone and it is ready to go. Now the last things you're gonna wanna do here is first off, let all that goo gone completely dry because it does evaporate pretty quickly. But you're gonna wanna put some sort of wax coating or spray wax or something on that. I'm just gonna get my Ultimate Detailer Spray Wax and put that on there because you did just remove basically every last little bit of wax and everything that was on your vehicle. So you wanna get a nice uh, new coat of wax on there. I'm just going to use spray wax because I do plan on doing a full um, synthetic wax uh, later on in the next couple weeks. So no need to do it over. Okay, I just sprayed the sixth coat. We're going to do a couple more coats on these. But we got the sixth coat on the front badge, which means we can fit. Um, ah, I can't speak right now. Fumes, too high. <laughs> but uh, we can peel off all the masking on the front emblem. So I'm going to grab my bucket. We're going to go out there and we're going to start peeling those off. So you have to be really careful when you're peeling off the tape very close because it will start to peel at um, the plasti dip that's around the emblem. And as you can see, I can peel it off really freaking easy. So the whole point of masking close to it is that we don't get too much overspray uh, and that we build up a thick coat around the emblem so that way we can peel it off. I'm going to get a toothpick now so that will make it easier for me to peel up at the edges as well as get in between the A, the O, the C, all those little fine detail areas. We do have some overspray areas, but those will come off really easily with a microfiber towel. So I'm going to go get a microfiber towel and a toothpick and get at cleaning up this emblem and then we'll move over to the other emblem and then we'll move to the front hood and then we'll do the bumper steps last. <laughs> Coming together, the emblems look sweet. So now we got to reassemble this grill, which is down below me, with the grill piece that's back there, and get that back on the front end of the truck, and then bumper caps, and this stage of the blackout is over with. And all that'll be left is tinting. There it is, blacked out chrome. Man, it's really missing that tint now. Tinting those headlights, that fog light, and that emblem's gonna make it look sick. We got the emblems blacked out. It's looking a lot more aggressive now. Subtle changes, subtle changes. All right, so now time to take these end caps and put them on the truck, and we'll be done. And as you can see, it black. That has to be probably the biggest transformation out of this whole entire project is that rear end. That looks sick. This is pretty much the conclusion of this video. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up because uh, one thing if you don't know about plastic dip is it gets everywhere. The particles get everywhere and this floor is covered in black stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and sweep this out um, as well as clean up. And then we'll get some cinematic shots here at sundown. And that is all for the Blackout Project Part 1. Part 2 will be coming very shortly when the tint arrives. It's on order right now and it should be here.
hopefully within the next week. Also, stay tuned for all the amazing mods we're going to be doing on this channel, like HID bulbs that I have right here that I have not yet installed. As well as, let's see, we got wheel spacers, air intake, exhaust, lift, LED tailgate lights, front light bar, step rails, pro grill, black geek. Yeah, you, you get the idea. We got lots of mods coming for this channel. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so that way you can be, you can be, you can, you can see all the videos. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. And in general, if you like what this channel is, um, it's awesome. You should hit the like button regardless because it helps out the channel. And I still don't really know what the, the catchphrase is for this channel, but um, Taco Rick out. Peace.